Well, greetings, saints. Welcome to Chaplain Peter One on YouTube. I'm also on Brighton.com under Heavenly Glory. And my website is Eternal Values Ministries. Dot com. Today, I want to just share my heart about some things as um, I think about all the things that are going on in America, here in the United States, and to, um, and to just uh, share, share some things about um, Christian patriotism. Christian patriotism. Is there such a thing? as Christian patriotism. If you're a Christian, should you be a patriotic Christian? In other words, uh, for God and country. And I think we have to understand something here. As, uh, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've been born again and you trust Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, we, we need to understand that... Um, God is king. Jesus is the king. He is the prince of the earth, the scripture says. He's the rightful heir. And right now there's a usurper on the throne called the devil, Satan, the old serpent, uh, by proper name in Isaiah 14, uh, Lucifer, the light bearer. And he usurps the authority of God. And this is given by permission of God, by permission of God, and he uses the devil to test his people throughout history. All you got to do is read uh, chapters one and two of the book of Job, the terrible things that happened to Job, all allowed by God for the devil to do. The devil was given permission by God to go do the things he did to Job, even to kill his 10 children. And so when we talk about um, uh, the United States, for instance, what is it about the United States that makes us different than any other nation that ever existed on the face of the earth? You know, other than our constitution, our prosperity, and the uniqueness of our culture and so forth, uh, otherwise, we are not better or worse than any nation that God ever put on the face of the earth. We're all made of the same people. We're all made of the same blood. We all come from Adam. And the United States came into existence, what, 1776, 200-some uh, years ago. And most people believe including Christians, that is founded on um, Christian principles, Christian principles. But uh, when you look at what the founding fathers actually believed, um, go watch the video, The Hidden Faith of Our Founding Fathers. The Hidden Faith of Our Founding Fathers. And you will see letters that they wrote back and forth to one another, documented in the Library of Congress, you will see what they actually uh, believed. Washington himself, well, he was a Freemason. He was a deist. The clergy at that time tried to get a, um, a testimony out of him as to what he believed about Christ. On uh, Sunday mornings with his wife at church, when communion would come up, on that particular time, on Sunday morning, he would leave the church. He never took communion. Before he died, history tells us that he was baptized by a Jesuit priests from the Catholic Church. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, he rewrote the New Testament. He threw out all the miracles. He says, we got we to gotta, you know, know what the manure is, the garbage is and what the real word of God is. And so the, the Thomas Jefferson New Testament, he wrote. And the virgin birth is not there, because how can a virgin get pregnant, right? 
and um and and, and the other walking on water uh you know that that's not there uh, i suppose raising the dead he, that's not there i never read it but he wrote this the, the uh, thomas jefferson new testament and so these people many of these these founders were not christian <laughs> um it's unfortunate that uh, such a deception is is put upon us. Now, are there a lot of Christians in the United States? Yeah, there's a lot of, of course, there's a lot of Christian in the United States. And the United States uh, was a great country, sending missionaries and Bibles all over the world. But uh, look at the look at the United States uh, right now. We are the promoters of homosexuality, transgenderism abortion, every evil under the sun. We we promote it, get rid of the borders. Isaiah 110, or Isaiah chapter 10, speaks about uh, the Antichrist removing the borders. The Antichrist removes the borders. Not, not God. God set up the borders and he put men in their nations in Genesis uh, 10 and 11. And so um, we are in a, in a dilemma here. And, and many Christians, I'm afraid, are patriotic to the point they're ready to pick up arms and to fight the government. And I want to ask you a question. Is that in the Bible? That we should make revolution against the government? When, um, when they arrested James in the book of Acts, and they put him to death, seeing that the Jews had, uh, they liked it, so uh, he, he was put to death. Uh, no revolution was uh, made. No fight was made to save his life. Uh, Peter was arrested. An angel let him out of the prison. Uh, Paul appealed to Caesar so he wouldn't have to be given over to the uh, to the Jewish people, the Jewish authorities, who would have killed him, and um, you know the same government he appealed to had him beheaded. Nero had him beheaded. In uh, Second Timothy, he says, "I fought a good fight. You know, it, it, it's over, and there's a crown of glory waiting for me." Second Timothy four, and this idea that. Uh, we're supposed to uh, go and take up arms and, and uh, overthrow a fraudulent government, overthrow uh, a, a government um, that you know, we don't believe should be in, in, in administration, that we don't believe should be in power. I think there's something we got to remember here. First of all, we're to follow no man, whether it be George Washington, whether it be uh, Reagan, or whether it be uh, Bush or Trump or whoever, we're to follow no man. Let me read to you out of um, over here in Daniel chapter 4 about the story when Daniel was in Babylon with Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar got turned into an animal. He grew hair like feathers. His nails got like claws. And he walked around eating grass like a beast for about seven years, it says. And then his mind came back. And it says, the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. How you doing, brother? And he was driven from men and did eat, did eat grass as oxen. And his body was with the dew of heaven till the hairs were grown like eagles' feathers and his nails like birds' claws. And at the end of days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever and ever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is a generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What dost thou? At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and the glory of my kingdom, my honor, and my brightness returned unto me, 
and my counselors and my lords sought me, sought out to me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways, judgment, and those who walk in pride, he is able to abase. In other words, to lower and to humble. So that was the conclusion. One of the greatest and most powerful kings that ever existed came to after he got back into his right mind because the Lord humbled him and gave him back his glory, his dominion. And he says, hey, God gives power and raises up who he wants and who he wants. He, he puts down and even makes him like a like a like a beast. Nebuchadnezzar understood who was in charge. And then when we. When we go to um, Romans uh, 13, it tells you here, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister of God unto thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God to event, to a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. And he says, goes on to pay tribute and taxes and so forth. But the first verse, let every soul be subject unto the powers, for there is no power but of God, and the powers that be are ordained of God. Now, let me ask you, saints, um, the power right now that's in charge of the United States, and I'm speaking of uh, April uh, 12th here, April 12th, uh, 2021, whatever you, you think of them, uh, however corrupt you might believe that they are and that they don't belong in power. Here's the thing. The scripture says that nobody gets into power unless God puts them there. Do you understand that? Nebuchadnezzar got it. And Paul here gives us the doctrine and the understanding. Nobody gets into power. So if God put in the present administration into power, what should be our attitude towards this? What, what, what are we to do? Now, we're not to obey evil, just like the apostles did not obey when they were told not to preach no more, when they were told, uh, you know, uh, we'll have to put a, a homosexual bathroom in a synagogue. They, they of course, resisted this. And they resisted unto blood. They died for it. Resisting sin. Like it says in Hebrews, they, they were beaten. After they were beaten, they went straight back to the temple and they continued preaching. They tried to stop them uh, preaching in the name of Jesus to bring the blood upon them, the blood of Jesus upon them. And, and so, you know, you don't, you don't uh, obey sinful things and you continue to do what God tells you to do. But now this idea that we're to take up arms to overthrow the government that we don't believe should be in power. And even if it got into power uh, through corruption, God still allowed it. God has allowed these things to go on like this to history. Our job is to let God do his work and we're to be obedient to God. This is important. For instance, our Constitution was written on a lambskin, the Bill of Rights, uh, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of press, and, and other things of this nature. These, these freedoms that are given to us um, by God, these, these rights of ours, that same lambskin is a lambskin to Freemasons, who most of the founders were, 
would wear around their loins and be buried with that lambskin on. And that lambskin is supposed to be the righteousness of God. The only place where I find any aprons put on anybody's loins was when Adam sinned against God and he was naked and ashamed and they made aprons onto themselves. And God then killed an animal, shed, shed blood, and he clothed them with animal skins. The apron won't do. These rights that you and me have, we are to understand them as responsibilities, I believe. We've been given rights, but we don't have the right, according to the scriptures, to go against God. If God puts a king in, God puts a president in power that promotes homosexuality. Well, we don't have to, we don't have to obey anything that he wants us to do that has to do with homosexuality or abortion. Well, we don't have to obey nothing that does has to do with abortion or transgenderism or any, any uh, sinful or uh, lustful things that are against God. All these are just, detestable and abominable things. We don't participate in them, but we do not overthrow the government because God put it in power. And the reason God put it in power is because America is about to be judged for their sins. Do you understand this? America is about to be judged for their sins. We've gone too far all over the world. I believe America is mystery Babylon with the, with the whore with the golden cup riding the beast. It made all the world drunk. All the kings fornicated with America. America sends money to all kinds of countries all over the world to promote the homosexuality, transgenderism, to promote the abortions. And God has been patient. And yes, there's a lot of Christians here. A lot of lukewarm Christians also. And things are about to get real serious. Let me read to you in uh, in uh, Revelation 13, the uh, famous uh, or infamous passage about the mark of the beast, but there's a verse here. I want, I want you to hear in Revelation 13, and it's talking about the beast becoming Antichrist. And it says here, and they worship the dragon, in verse 4, they gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it, were, <clears throat> and it was given to him to make war with the saints. Listen to this. And it was given to this beast to make war with you and me, with the believers in Christ, with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the beast, whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Can you hear people? You have the servant of the Holy Spirit. Can you hear what God is saying? God is giving permission to the beast to overcome the saints and to kill us. To kill us, to hunt us down. Because we, we refuse to worship the beast. We refuse to mark his name or his number. So we will be hunted down and killed. We're going to go back to the first centuries of our history where they threw the uh, saints to lions and dogs and crucified them by the millions and inquisitions of the, uh, of the Roman church was made against the saints. We're going back to these things and God is going to test us to see if we are faithful. He says here in Revelation 12, 11, he says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. 
You hear that, saints? They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he know it, he has but a short time. So we overcome him by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, by our testimony, and we love not our lives unto the death. We do not have a, uh, a Second Amendment right here in the Bible. Do you understand that? How do we overcome evil? What does the scripture say, saints? It says that you overcome evil with good. If your enemy is thirsty, give him drink. If he's hungry, feed him. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire upon his head. In other words, when you are kind to them that hate you, it will convict them. The conviction of the Holy Spirit will come upon them so they can so they can believe if they will repent and believe. And so this is, saints, where we are at. I know that uh, it's in our nature to want to fight. I know it's in our nature to want to make the things that are wrong and make them right. But this is where we have to uh, crucify the flesh. This is where we have to look at the scripture and take an honest look. We're not in the Old Testament. We're not a theocracy. We are not the nation of Israel where God said, go and conquer Canaan because they're giants over there and because they're sacrificing the children. And, and uh, when, when Joshua told them to go conquer uh Canaan and, and other nations that were doing all kinds of abominations, and we're not we're not at the time of uh, King David and Joshua and others. This is not a ruler. This is not a theocracy, a national theocracy like Israel was. We are the body of Christ, a new creation. And Jesus stood in front of Pontius Pilate, and, pa and Pilate asked him, "Are you a king?" You know, the Jews say, "You're a king. Are you a king?" And he says, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom, uh, if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. But my kingdom is not of this world. So my servants don't fight. This doesn't mean we don't fight spiritually. It doesn't mean that you cannot defend your wife or your children. Uh, if someone is trying to harm you, someone is trying to rob you, break into your home. But when it comes to them in power that God has put there, even if they're evil and doing evil things, it's not up to us to overthrow what God is doing. You're going to find yourself fighting against God himself if you start picking up arms to fight against the government. Because nowhere in the New Testament do you find anywhere? You're, only one person, it says, um, was a, a revolutionary uh, insurrectionist, and that was Barabbas. And Barabbas is the one, the murderer, they let go instead of Jesus. Pontius, Pontius Pilate gave him a choice. Who do you want? Because it was a custom on that day that they should release somebody. Who do you want to release? You want Jesus? Or do you want Barabbas? They said, release Barabbas. Release the murderer. Release the insurrectionist, the one who's killing the Roman soldiers and making revolution. Release him. As for Jesus, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Let his blood be upon our heads and our children's heads, they said. And so it's been throughout history. Don't do this wickedness. Don't do this wickedness. You can, you can love your country. But you need to love God more and obey God. And you need not to love uh, your life so much you're not ready to lay it down for the Lord Jesus Christ like he laid it down for you. So that's that's my prayer. That's my hope for you, saints, that you understand what is going on. Because it's going to get real serious now. We're, we're nearing the end. We're nearing the end, saints. 
and uh, give glory to God. Give glory to God. Um, don't spoil it by actually fighting against what God is doing. Don't do this, saints. Let's pray. Father, we just come to your throne of grace and we just thank you, Lord. Give the saints strength and discernment and understanding this hour. Open the eyes of the leaders and the pastors and the elders, Lord, to teach, to teach the people, Lord, the things that need to be done right now at this time, Father. Father, I pray that none of us start fighting against this uh, government and raising up arms, Lord. There's going to be enough of that done anyway. But we are to be faithful with the testimony of Jesus in our mouth, Lord, and uh, overcoming, Lord, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, Lord, and not loving our lives unto death, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be able to endure the things that are coming and give you all the glory. And one day we'll stand in front of you, Lord, and you will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Well, I love you, saints. I hope you understand this. The Lord be with you. God bless you.